got the purchase order. We can see we have 25,000 here. I now get the invoice for this. And I need to get this into AP because now, of course, I need to pay uh, for the booth. So go ahead and open up that purchase order. We get an invoice number from the vendor, so I'm going to put that in here. That's the booth invoice for our Fabricam vendor. Not changing anything. They sent an invoice for the PO value. I'm ready to then post this and receive it so I can create a vendor record. So right from the purchase order, I'm, there's a quantity of one. If we had partials, we could, of course, change this to a half, or maybe I'm only paying half now, half later. We can process prepayment. So all the functionality you would expect around being able to receive or invoice partial POs or process prepayments is available within the system. But in our case, we're keeping it very simple. We're just getting the invoice for that. We're going to go ahead and post that. So we're going to, going to receive an invoice it. So even though it's not inventory, it still wants to do both of those parts at the same time. We would have the ability to receive something. Maybe the invoice is coming later, but we want to get that expense on our general ledger. We can um, modify this process to incorporate a three-way match. We're going to go ahead and receive an invoice that. And we'll go ahead and open that up. So now what we have is a posted invoice in our system. So we have now an invoice that's been committed to the ledger against our department in our trade show. And now we have a payable due to Fabricam. All right, we have to now get this out so we can pay for this invoice. So let's go ahead and pay. So to pay, we'll go into our payment journal. So we have a payment journal. We're going to go ahead and open that up and have the system then present me with this invoice for Fabricam that we need to pay. So we'll go into our batch. And again, those batch names, they're user defined. We can have multiple batches. If you have multiple people paying, multiple payment types, you can really use those, those journal entry or payment, in this case, payment journal batches as a way to guide the user uh, for what they're about to do. So I come into the screen, I have a blank journal entry here. I don't know, like, there's nothing presented to here. I have to go out and tell the system, you know, what to do. You know, who, who should I be paying? I have some past due documents and I wanna make some payments. Now in my example, I know Fabricam, we pay them by wire, right? It's, we don't cut checks to them. They prefer wire, we prefer to send the wire. So when I go out and suggest vendor payments, I can make some choices here to only bring me back vendor, a vendor or vendors that we pay by wire. So maybe I'm doing, doing my wire payments today and I'm gonna cut my checks tomorrow. So if I come in here, I want to tell the system what to bring me back. I wanna give it some instruction. So I wanna say, give me all invoices that are due by when. So I'm gonna go out a couple months here, make sure we capture that invoice. I'll go ahead and post that today so we can pick a posting date. I am summarizing this by, by vendor. I don't want a payment for every invoice. I want to group those invoices together, send the payment with some remittance advice to the vendor, and, and make one posting for that. If I look what I'm restricting here, I'm restricting the payment method code. So I want to tell the system I have some, my code is just the bank conversion. This could be wire, ACH. These are totally user defined, but a way for me to search for specific vendors that I want to present for payment. I might have a payment method of check, wire, ACH, cash. So when I'm ready to pay those vendors or have those invoices presented for payment, I can restrict that search by that field. So I go ahead, select OK. We'll get some invoices back. There's my Fabricam. So that's the vendor I want to pay. I know I have an open invoice for them. I know it's $25,000. So here we are. We're ready to pay this vendor. It's gone out and told me, yes, this is due. Based on the date I selected, we now need to pay this vendor. Before we do that, I want to pick how I'm going to pay them here. I want to send them a wire. So we're going to send this via electronic payment. One of the key things, and you know, we get this here from our vendors too, is sometimes we'll receive a wire and there's no notice. We don't know what it's for. We have to call them up saying, hey, great, thank you for paying. Can you send us or let us know what invoices we need to apply this to? What we're able to do here is before we send this file to our bank, we can submit 
or export the remittance that we're making the electronic payments for. So I'll choose to export this first. We're taking this out of our checking, we'll print one copy. We'll send it to PDF. We do have the ability to email it from here as well. So if I have four or five vendors I'm paying by wire, I select email. Each one of those vendors is going to get a remittance, letting them know that the wire is on the way and what we're paying. But so we can see it, we'll go ahead and send that to PDF. That will pop up a remittance advice for us. Have our logo and our address. But more importantly, it will show the vendor what it is we're paying them. Right, so I'm sending a wire for 25,000 and against this invoice number they sent me. So if I was paying four or five invoices, they would all show here. So the vendor would get this in advance of the wire. So when they get it, they can easily apply that to your open invoices. So now that I got the remittance out, great, that's been emailed. Let's come back in here and generate a file. So we're sending this via EFT. I'm gonna get an EFT file, I'm gonna upload it to the bank. The bank is then gonna process my wires to my vendors. So we generate that file. It'll show us what is about to go out. We only have one, but if there was four or five or six, seven vendors we, we were paying, we would see those here to include in our EFT file. We'll generate that EFT file. We would then save that. And we're saving this to a location on a local machine where when we navigate to our bank website, and I'll save that to my desktop, we can upload this to the bank and the bank handles our wires. Wires are out to the bank. Simply come back in here and we can post our invoice or our payment. So now from that PO, it's been approved, we've received the invoice and we've paid that vendor via wire. This same, same window would be used if we were cutting checks. Right? I don't have check stock to show you guys, but if we needed to cut by check, we can change this bank payment type to computer check and instead of an EFT file as the output, you would select your printer and the checks would be printed. You can then mail them to your vendor.